I'm here with Cindy Rakowitz, founder and executive director of Fit for the Cause. Cindy, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So tell me a little bit about Fit for the Cause. So in response to our health care crisis, Fit for the Cause provides licensed fitness instructors and nutrition educators for low-income communities, um, providing preve preventional health wellness education so that it keeps their doctor bills down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so. you started the organization five years ago, is that right? Yes, we're celebrating our five-year anniversary now. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, challenging business model, but we have served probably 10,000 people over the last five years. So five years ago, you were not involved in the nonprofit scene. What, what issues did you see that caused you to want to get this going? Five years ago, I was a corporate chick, kind of entrepreneurial, intrapreneurial. And um, for one, I lost my parents very prematurely to cancer. So that was an eye opener for me. Mm. Um, when you lose parents at a young age and you start outliving where your parents, you know, died. Yeah. So that's pretty much um, a philosophical wake up call for one. Um, second, um, our children grew up, went off to college, so I had more time to embrace fitness as a part of my sedentary lifestyle. And I saw how much healthier I myself have become. Um, you know, it's incredible how your, you know, your heart gets stronger, your mind becomes preoccupied and um, endorphins just make you feel really, really happy in a natural way. Mm -hmm. um, but thirdly, you know, you see all of these world crises, for lack of a better word, and um, you keep on reading about how people are struggling with health care. And, you know, there are governmental solutions, but at the end of the day, a lot of people don't have access to the best medical care. Um, you don't even have to be in the low income line to experience challenges with our healthcare system. Um, middle income people don't have access to the same concierge, you know, doctors that, um, you know, wealthy have. So how do you bring something that's accessible to those with money to those that don't have it? And, um, in my years of becoming a fitness enthusiast and getting licensed through American Council on Exercise, um, both in therapeutic exercise and now senior functional fitness with master certification, um, you see statistically that if you get a person involved with good healthcare habits, nutrition-based habits and physical fitness habits, how they're not going to the doctor as often. Yeah. And you are providing a service that can make a person's lifestyle day to day um, much better. And that goes for movement and that goes for mental health and it goes for just feeling good overall. And, you know, we as a nonprofit organization are determined to reach as many people as possible to give them access to those kinds of tools. So what are some of the specific programs and services that you provide? Well, um, we serve multiple demographics. We, um, we serve um, at-risk teens, fragile seniors, and vulnerable children. And many of these communities have special needs. Um, so we, we hire the licensed fitness professional or nutritionist or health coach to come in to a group, sometimes individuals, and provide a multitude of fitness programs that are tailored for their needs. Um, we also, in addition to that, provide senior functional fitness programs that um, seniors, you know, couldn't have access to. So it's groups of seniors that are coming together on a daily basis. So you're giving them a sense of community in addition to giving them the strength um, and flexibility that they need so much in order to, you know, move forward with their day-to-day -day activities. Um, 
in, in the children's world. Um, we're very often found in schools. We've initiated a program that's very, very successful in Ventura. Um, that's a dance fit oriented program that now serves about a thousand children in Ventura um, and growing in the Conejo area as well. Then we're affiliated with the Teen Center, which you know all too well, and we offer Zumba programs and dance programs, dance beach party programs for <laughs> teens. Yeah. So for almost all the groups that you serve, they have limited access to any sort of fitness and nutrition information, let alone licensed professionals that you provide. Exactly. Um, what, but you provide the services for those groups for free, is that right? There is no charge to any of the recipients who are receiving our wellness education services. That's amazing. So um, that means that we as a nonprofit and a board have to work very, very hard to raise funds um, to serve these constituents. Our challenge right now is we have so many groups that are coming to us because they're hearing about how we're making groups healthy. Right. And sometimes we just don't have the funding to provide the services to them. And that's the, t the tipping point where we are right now. Um, so many people know about our services, so they come to us and say, hey, I have a group of people that have um, multiple sclerosis and we would love for you to do a weekly class with them. But if I don't have the funding for it, we can't do it. When we first started out, I didn't know what to expect <laughs> because I never had run a nonprofit before. Although I've sat on several boards and you know understood basic philanthropy, when I took this on, I you know, I was just kind of blown away at how challenging of a business model it is. Many people ask me, how do you get your beneficiaries? And I don't have that problem because they're all coming to me. It's very inbound. Community conscience is very helpful in that area because they house 13 nonprofits that are in the low income, you know, demographic. So it's very easy for them to say, hey, we know that Fit for the Cause provides great programs in both nutrition and physical fitness. Let's refer our clients you know, to that organization, keep it under the roof right. of community conscience. And the, so, that's part of the reason for community conscience. The reason that it exists there is so those organizations can work together and coordinate their efforts. I think that we have a really good symbiotic relationship with community conscience. There's other agencies affiliated with community conscience that benefit from our services as well. Um, although Hillcrest Royale is right next door and not a part of the 13 agencies, Robin um, referred me to them because they have seniors who are 80 years old plus that were in need of movement and physical fitness. Now I've been working with these strong um, seniors for nearly a year. And what's amazing to me is they're usually wheelchair, wheelchair bound or walker dependent. And when I'm teaching them a Zumba class, they throw their walkers to the side, they get off of their wheelchairs and they're dancing. So, <laughs> That's a really good example of a community conscience referral that's helping a community that's really in need. Well, the, the, so. the impact at all of the groups that you serve seems so significant. Um, like you mentioned, with, with the seniors really coming out of uh, uh, these sedentary, uh, closed-in lifestyles and, and really opening up. Um, but for the younger groups and the kids that you serve, I mean, that's a lifelong change if you can educate them on on how to eat healthy and, and, and how to maintain fitness and the importance of that. It is so important. It's, um, you know, it's amazing how the habits that we form as children can create a life of health challenges if you don't get active at a young age. The cause and effect of having an obese child for health later in life is what you would expect. That's when they get heart disease. You know, that's when they get cardiopulmonary challenges. Um, that's when they get type two diabetes. It's, these are health issues that can be very, very debilitating 
and are very expensive to treat. So eating healthy is probably one of the most fundamental, you know, um, habits that we could teach our children young, along with physical fitness activity. You've got your work cut out for you then I moving do. forward. What's, I what's, do. What's, what's the plan going forward? What, what, where do you see yourself five years from now? Well, I'm hoping that now that we've passed our five-year threshold, um, that perhaps maybe we could get some more government recognition and funding because ultimately obese children um, or young adults with special needs who need to rehabilitate through fitness, okay, um, it helps their health day in and day out. So if we were to get some government funding, I assure you in the way that we are helping these people with preventative health care, there's going to be savings on the other end when it comes to emergency surgeries and hospital stays or treating people with depression or treating, you know, um, you know the trips and falls that many people, whether they're senior or young adults with special needs, will experience. I mean, these are all expenses, and who's paying for it? And lifelong ex expenses. Lifelong expenses. So um, right now, most of our funding is private. Most of our funding comes from our board of directors and small businesses that know our board of directors. And I'm just hoping that somebody recognizes that if we grow, that we could really have an impact on a major world problem here. So, <laughs> so for anyone watching, what's what's the best thing that they could do to help Fit for the Cause? Go to www.fitforthecause.org and hit donate. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's like $5, it goes right to our programs. We don't have a lot of operational and administrative expenses, so you're not paying for office space. You're not even paying for salaries. You know, you're just paying to let another group have access to a licensed fitness program that can be life changing for them. Well, congratulations on a successful first five years. Well, you, you've got you. an event coming up related to that, right? Yeah, we do. Um, the Greater Conejo Chamber of Commerce is recognizing Fit for the Cause for its five year anniversary um, at Agora Fitness on June 13th at 4.30 p.m. with a ribbon cutting ceremony. Well, thank you so much for being here. Okay, thank you, Justin. And if you wanna learn more or support Fit for the Cause, visit their website at fitforthecause.org.